Good day, global crypto enthusiasts. This is 88 Fantastic coming to you Monday, October 28th, 2019. Hope you're all doing very well. Hopefully you guys had a great weekend. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to come join me here on this YouTube channel talking about the cryptocurrency market and what another outstanding weekend it was. Today's Bitcoin price we see currently sitting at 9,426 with a day low of 9,108 and a day high of 9,909. And then as you can see here, oh, what are we at here at about there? Probably about eight, nine hours. We've had a bit of a slide back, but you know, it's still sitting at that in between 93 and 96 is a lot better sitting in the in the high sevens and low eight. So let's have a quick look here. We're going to review. Re refresh our markets and then we got two interesting articles on two different people on writing about their trip their tips for trading I, I had a quick look over i didn't read everything i like to read everything fresh and then we'll kind of beat it up together and then the one thing i would really like to happen today with this video is just come in and make some comments on it because again i've only briefly skimmed over it and I know one of the articles is definitely written by a, a day fucking stock trader, not a true crypto guy. So we'll have a little bit of fun with that. So uh, we still see, oh, hey, you know what? Since we've had three days since the video. There's been no new cryptocurrencies added to the market. We are still sitting at 3,047 uh, available cryptos for purchase, which is just it's nice to see that amount, but really, like we've always said since um, early January in this channel, there's probably between 125 to maybe 150 of those 3,000 projects that are actually worthy and will continue to do actual business in the real world, where the rest of those 28, 2,900 cryptos are just either complete, absolute scrams, fraudulent, um, just have no use casage whatsoever. So uh, let's have a look here who's been making out our last 24, and then we're going to check out our, our actual market and our 7-day, 14-day gainers. Uh, Tron still... Very nice to see it actually held at its uh, at, uh, decimal 021, floated back between one not the high one nines and the two O's there for the longest time. Uh, KuCoin shares is also pushing it up. IOTA at 29 cents. Uh, oh my go OMG at a buck eight. I mean there is a guy there is another one for 2017 and 18 that was pumped up through the roof. The world was buying OMG. OMG was gonna be the answer to everything, and then they went into complete obscurity along with the vast majority of the rest of the market from 2018. Nice to see him get a little bit of love. I'm not sure what the price has been for so long, but for somebody that's probably held that for two years, they're probably shit their pants a little bit uh, that they got some growth in their market so uh, let's see if anybody's actually taking a beating here uh bite tom to be expected it had a humongous humongous five six day stretch uh yes again we are talking about bite tom's volume bite tom's volume is usually very small in the hundreds of thousands had actually ramped up to over a hundred million for the longest time there last week uh just absolutely uh, really good to see if you're somebody that owns that now let's get on and have a looky here now that the money's been coming in, uh, let's have a look here. How long has our money been coming in for here? Hasn't been too long. Again, everything is always live, right off the bat, unedited. I do apologize. But it's always better this way, I feel. Okay, so our money's been coming in, let's say right here, what day was that? Uh, the 25th, and today's the 20th. So we're only going to look at our last. So the only column we're looking at here is our seven-day column. We'll just do the top 100 and see who's really gained. I mean, everybody has. Uh, let's just do double digits because <laughs> there's a lot. Bitcoin at 14, Bitcoin Cash at 50, Binance Coin at 10, EOS at 13, Bitcoin Fake Satoshi at 29, Tron at 35%, Cardano there, as we see, at 10%. Kuobi token at 10%. Neo, so far the bigger biggest gainer of the week at 52%, but definitely took it on the chin from uh, last night because they were sitting at over 12 bucks. Do, 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 do. Ontology at 50%, but again, Ontology actually hit $1.18 yesterday. So even though it's gained 50% at 89 cents, it's taken some lumps since yesterday. Keep going in our double digits. Inside chain at 10%. Qtum, another one I've got for, for a, a heavy uh, late push. Well, I guess it is late in the year now at 37%. VeChain at 18 Prism, there's a new entry for me at 34%. Again, look at Thornex. This one we've bitched about the whole year. And again, it has had no trading volume the entire year. It's literally sat right there at that 160K mark every day for a year. 
So again, these are the things you need to watch out for. When I see stuff like that, and I see its volume literally staying at the same mark each and every day, that tells me it's only one or two entities actually passing it back and forth, trying to lure somebody in there to, to cycle the poor buggers out. So we're going to get stopped there. I mean, there's just it's been a really good three to four days in the market. The numbers will be a little bit um, skewed because of what's the, the pullback from last night. So let's get on to these articles here. I think you guys are going to like these ones here. Uh, the first one is over at Cointelegraph dot com from two hours ago i love it when it says veteran trader don't break these 11 rules trading bitcoin and crypto and this is the one i think some guy from uh, wall street or some some guy that trades in the everyday stock market in in the wall street world and i think this is what he's trying to give on his opinion into the crypto market i think i'm going to end up crushing this one and a lot of you guys are going to do the same as well again come into the comment section as we go through these and tell me what you think of this okay he's got Never re re revenge trade. When I finish a trade, whether in a profit or loss, I have a rule that I steadfastly stick to. I close I close the chart and do not look at it for 24 hours. This prevents me from revenge trading. There's a reason the trade was closed, which means there's no likely reason, reason to immediately enter. Okay, first rule right there, why, why, why that statement is so wrong is because in the real stock world, the market closes every day. The market closes every day. In the world of cryptocurrency, if you have any experience with trading and watching order blocks and watching prices every day of the week like I do, this is a total bullshit statement because there is so many times in a day where you can trade out out of the same coin and get right back in and still make solid 5 to 10% profit, probably 50 to 60 times per day off of the same coin if you know what you're actually looking for. Why? Because I've been doing it since July myself. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. Avoid trading crypto on the weekends weekend price action in the crypto market is often volatile and and occurs at low volumes again completely utterly ridiculous and as ass backwards as it possibly gets there is no particular day at any given time that there's a better or worse day to trade a crypto markets why because that's another thing me and my guys have actually studied and for a while there it was always buy on a friday sell on a sunday buy on a monday sell yeah and just keep repeating and it went that way for about four or five weeks but then when when the smart money sees what's happening they crush you and again smart money are those people the computer scientists the billionaires the multimillionaires that are hiring people that are just so good you can't keep up to them unless you've got a better trading robot than they do right now Never trade Forex on a Friday. Again, so this statement here, just the title itself is as stupid as it gets. I don't know anybody that trades on Forex. Personally, I know it's a big site. I personally don't know any of the thousands of people that I'm in contact with. I've never seen a single person, even in Telegram, mention trading on Forex. So again, this is definitely an article that's coming from somebody that is in the actual stock market. And at five o'clock when their market closes, they're going home to a nice plate of supper and they're not worrying about shit until eight o'clock the next morning. Again, an experienced cryptocurrency trader like myself, there is no bad time, there is no good time. It's all of the time because the, the market market itself is 7-Eleven. It's 24-7. Excuse me. Maintaining specific trading hours. Again, another one that is just totally bogus and full of shit. I mean, this, this article keeps getting, uh, whoever wrote this or whoever gave this guy this information, your guy is completely lost and out to lunch. Um, here's another one that is absolutely ridiculous. Never fall in love with an asset. Okay, in the stock market, maybe that's true. In the cryptocurrency market, again, 100% false and completely fucking inaccurate. Um, I'll use an example like um, um, other than these last maybe three weeks, ontology. You could buy ontology at 88 cents almost every day and turn around and fucking sell it for a, between a dollar and a dollar five virtually every day because that's the volatility of the market and the pump and dump groups another great one was fucking chain link you could buy chain link at a certain price in a day and probably flip it and sell it for five to eight percent every day of the week i mean that is again he hasn't had a good piece of advice for anybody in the market just yet 
Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> One of my steadfast rules as a beginning trader, I used to check multiple indicators, news sources, and patterns to find a confluence for my trades. Okay, this is actually decent to do. Um, we call it doing your own research and your own due diligence. Now, when I'm talking about coins that you can flip on a continually basis, you need to be, in order for you to do that, you need to do your homework and your research, and you need to understand where those prices go, how many times in a day. I'm able to do that because while I'm earning money from my faucets all day long, your faucets, when you're earning your money from your faucets, the reward is based on the dollar. So as I'm hammering my faucets, the rewards change every second that I'm hammering them. So as I'm collecting my free money, I can tell where the market is going. All right, next one. Only trade when you are in the proper mindset. That one I would agree with. If you're somebody that's in there and you're angry, you could lose your shirt in an awful, awful fast amount of time. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> so when you are trading, um, my personal advice would be make sure it's nice and quiet in the house. Um, you're not expecting a whole bunch of stuff. Make sure you've already had your chow, you've got your coffee or your drink ready, your smoke, whatever you're doing. All I, my best advice would always be is just be open, be relaxed, and have as many exchanges open in windows so you can see the volatility and where the prices are. Um, the biggest piece of advice I could give anybody, um, if you're going to trade or if you are trading and having a struggling time right now, I've said it a thousand and one times, you need to understand how to read order books. The fucking chart means shit. The charts mean absolutely nothing when you're a day trader, because the only thing that you are watching as a day trader is the actual order books itself. Uh, don't forget to journal. Journaling is boring and tedious. Like, did a 90-year-old guy write this? You don't need to journal shit in the crypto market because there's a daily and a, and, and a lifelong history of the particular project you're trying to trade. Anything you want to trade in the crypto market, you can go to uh, Cointelegraph or CoinCheckup or CoinGecko, click on the coin and you will have a lifelong history of everything you want to look at. Look at. Here's another one. Paper trade daily. I still paper trade day regularly. In fact, I have more theoretical positions open than actual ones at any given time. Okay, so when he's talking about paper trading, um, Another fancy word to put on it is indicators. You can have indicators for things that you want and you can get um, notifications on your phone. <clears throat> Don't try to catch a falling knife. The phrase catch a falling knife describes the attempt by a trader to buy a dropping asset or its nearest low point before uh, of a significant move. Again, that's where it comes into reading the charts. Uh, again, if, if you don't know how to understand a chart, don't trade. Um, if you're relying on a chart, but you don't understand what an order block is, don't trade. Anything that you need to do in this market all stems from the beginning is understand how the order blocks work because the order blocks are what create the chart. The chart means absolutely fucking nothing if you do not understand how to read an order block. So uh, don't over trade. I have found that less trade, the more money I tend to make. Again, very, very bad advice. Um, again, when you're looking into the crypto market, it's, 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 it's not only trends, it's not only news, it's everything. And you need to be able to understand trading volume, trading blocks, and the daily movement of the individual coins. There are probably 40 or 50 coins alone in the top 100. If you study them hard enough, you could see the trends and the daily trends and constantly swing trade. Um, again, um, not talking about, I mean, these guys are probably talking about a lot of actual money, whereas you and me, we're looking at, you know what, we got a hundred bucks, and how can I take a hundred and turn it into 120? How do I take that 120 and turn it into 150? And that's what I've personally done since July is with all of my other alternative coins. I've waited for these ridiculous pump and dump groups just to basically get to my coin. And soon as I have profited or come near profit, I've traded out and constantly trade it into higher and I've built my stack severely. So uh, the second one is over at, I love this name, CryptoPotato.com. Uh, this is from a couple of weekends ago, but it's eight must read tips uh, guide uh, trading Bitcoin and alternative coins. So um, have a reason for every trade. Okay, the number one, there, there's mainly two reasons for me when I trade. It's either to build my stack or 
to build my stack. There is no other reason. Um, if you're somebody that says, well, I support the team and I support the project, but I'm in it for the tech, then you shouldn't be trading. You should be buying and holding. The reason to trade is either to make money or to build your stacks. Clear stops, clear targets, have a plan. Exactly. That one I completely agree with. I am the same way. I try to time um, the bottom of the day or the bottom of the week, and I'm simply looking to make at least 5%. I don't care if I, it's $100 and I make it $105. i am always constantly trying to make that extra 5 up to, uh, if you're lucky, 15 16%. Because when you buy back in and the market dumps, even that 5 10 20 bucks adds up when you're buying back in at the bottom again. The FOMO, the fear of missing out. Be aware. This this one is this article is already better better than the article over at Coin Telegraph. Um, the fear of missing out is the one thing that I I do personally believe has cycled out more people this year, not 2017, 18, but 2019 is the new people that have come in and bought in and thinking, you know what, I've, I've done some research, I've done some studying, I'm going to trade. And as we can see in the market for all of 2019, everybody that did that, they've been speed bagged and completely cycled right out. Risk management, it's not just for crypto. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Uh, management risk wisely across your portfolio again that's another one it, it completely comes up to you there's so many different ways to do that there are people that just invest into bitcoin and that's it um, there are guys that will split it 50 50 between bitcoin and ethereum um, i personally did make that mistake i promised myself when i entered the market 10 coins buddy stop at 10 bitcoin is is 50 percent, and the other nine just scatter and 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 spread out your portfolio i personally ended up um, well over 20 coins and have paid the price for it throughout the whole year but by making that bad decision initially um, in early 2018 is where I had to teach myself how to be a trader understand that projects that I invested into they don't advertise they don't get onto exchanges and therefore when your volume gets so low we talked about this the other day there's a chance if your volume is so low on your coin you might not have a coin anymore so uh, cryptocurrencies are traded against Bitcoin, the underlying asset creates volatile market conditions. Most altcoins are mostly traded against Bitcoin rather than fiat. So here's this is actually pretty decent too. So when you when when you're asking what's he talking about there, you can use um, it, the trading pairs. If you understand how to use trading pairs, you will do very very well. Um, Another piece of advice is you should look at into your into your um, your portfolios, and if you've got coins that are stuck only in a Bitcoin or an Ethereum trading pair, and there's no stable coin attached to it, you're going to get bludgeoned at some point very very badly. Um, the market works the way the dollar works. Um, it takes more the um, the lower Bitcoin's price is, the more satoshis it takes to make a dollar. When Bitcoin's price is over 10k, um, it's over that dollar point, and it takes less satoshis. So if you can understand understand that and really wrap your brain around the dollar and how satoshis work with the dollar and against stable coins you will do very very well if you don't understand it i highly recommend you spend a couple of hours taking the time to understand how the dollar and stable coin versus satoshis and gui work it will really help you um, trade in the future must have tips for trading altcoins oh dear god most altcoins lose value over time. Um, actually, all of them did. Uh, they may bleed uh, in value slowly or rapidly, but the fact that the list of the largest 20 altcoins by market cap has changed so much over the past few years tells us a lot. And that's something I've told you guys to watch. Is I'm not watching like every other YouTuber is watching the top 10 uh, or the top 15, and that's all they ever talk about. What you need to do in this market, literally, if you're going to become a serious investor and a serious day trader, start studying the top 300. And if you got the time, start studying the top 400. The real money to make when you're day trading isn't so much in the top 50, top 100. It's in that 100 to that 400 mark because their market caps are so bloody low. If you're able to time it and read it properly, or sometimes if you don't, then you sit back and wait. You've got the stomach to wait a little bit. That's where you can make some serious serious gains um, this one here I'm not going to read it because I don't like any of these ones and it's ICOs IEOs and token sales I'm going to say on this one here if you invest into any of those 
um, you're a damn fool and you will get speed bagged and lose 80 to 90 percent of your stack the vast majority of all of these are pre-sold um, unless you've got a lot of money to begin with don't even bother because what happens on these is day one and two when these things actually hit the market everybody that's pre-invested waits for that first pump then they dump it all back onto the market and then they rebuy at a lower price and increase their stacks even further uh, next piece he says start today right now uh, is a very good piece to come and look at tips I mean everything is um, have a long-term end goal um, for me that was the number one thing um, when we had started before we put a dollar into this market is if you're gonna be a long-term investor like myself you need to sit down and think about what is the first time you would think of an exit so I started studying in October of 2017 and I personally didn't put a dollar into the market until April 1st of 2018. So I sat back for seven, eight months and I studied and I studied. I had 60, 70 YouTube channels. Now I actually don't watch anybody because like we said on the channel, there's not a person on the entire planet that knows what the market's gonna do. Me, you, all of us, we can come out and predict whatever we want you've got to be able to admit to yourself none of us are right and the market is what the market is so you need to have a long-term goal and i've said it on my channel a few times i don't care about the price of anything until the summer of 2020 after the next bitcoin happening that's been my my initial plan since since i entered the market is i don't care about any of the prices until the summer of 2020 and that's when i'll really start to look at um where I need to move some certain things. But since then, I've realized you, you, when you watch the market and there's projects that were, say, a top 30, 40, 50 project when you invested in 2017 or early in 2018, and you see those projects that were a top 30, 40, 50, now they're ranked 150, 280, ranked 400. You need to be able to, even though you've invested on it and you believe it's going to work, you really still need to pay, pay attention because a lot of them, um, especially in the Asian part of the crypto market, they don't advertise. They work on their tech, they pay their team, and they don't spend money on marketing. So identify crypto scams in seconds. I mean, you need to be able to do that yourself. Um, if you can't identify a scam as a grown-ass adult by now, you're in trouble. So uh, what you need to know about your long-term portfolio, we just described that. Uh, prop, the profit is temporary until you meet the fiat. Again, that's something too, if you're just trading Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, if you were actually trying to trade out this weekend, you would have seen both spectrums of it with the volatility. So a lot of them is when you put in something to sell and it doesn't sell right away. And as we've seen in the weekend, I mean, you could have went from say uh, $8,800 all the way up to 10,300 within a few minutes, or you could have went exactly the other way backwards. So uh, biggest advice I've always told people is don't keep any Anything on the exchanges I have no idea with the amount of wallets and the ease that it is to set up a wallet nowadays that people still leave um, the vast majority if not all of their stacks on an exchange when you're leaving your you're leaving anything in one central location you are a target when you have your money in your wallet you are not a target now why aren't you a target because there are millions upon millions of wallets no one is going to hack an individual wallet for 500 bucks when they have the opportunity to hack an exchange wallet with hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars so uh, create a group with your trading buddies again this is actually really really bad advice uh, because when somebody's wrong you're all wrong plain and simple when you're going to trade crypto and you're going to when you invest in a crypto, there's nothing wrong with listening to as many voices as you can possibly get. Nothing at all. If you're going to trade, don't listen to another person on this fucking planet. Do it yourself. Do your own research. And the number one thing I've said on this channel, be comfortable with your decision. So there we go. Let's hear what you guys got to come out and say. I've given you everything that I possibly do and my view on everything here. We see Bitcoin's uh, getting back up a little bit, just about to that $9,500 mark again. And then again, if you want to come see these articles, they are over at Cointelegraph.com and the CryptoPotato.com. <laughs> so that's all I got for you guys. We'll come back in another day or two. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Come out, make some comments. And again, go back to yesterday or my last video. You want to earn some free Bitcoin. Again, while you're at work, while while you're at sleeping, go back to my last video. It's all right there for you guys. This is 88 Fantastic showing you how to take a bite out of the cryptocurrency market. Take care, y'all.